Shepard and Johnson will watch the launch of Apollo 11 from the Kennedy Space Center next Wednesday at President Nixon's invitation. Officials estimate that one million people will be on hand in all, creating a mammoth traffic jam with a third of a million cars. But as Walter Cronkite reports, preparations for the flight itself are proceeding without problem. The Apollo 11 crew is ready for flight. That's the official word from the astronaut's doctor, Charles Berry, after today's final major pre-launch physical. Said the doctor, Neil, Mike, and Buzz appeared in good spirits. Their physical state looks good. While Dr. Berry was inspecting his astronauts, a different kind of inspection on Fab 39A. Emperor Haile Selassie, who once watched his barefoot Ethiopian soldiers hurling spears at Italian biplanes, arrived to see a spaceship about to leave for the moon. One unchanging figure in an age of headlong technology. On the pad, Gordon Cooper, one of the original Mercury astronauts, who incidentally was nine years old when Haile Selassie made his doomed appeal to the League of Nations. Countdown proceeds smoothly as ever, bringing us to one of the questions that we set out to answer in our nationwide report on the people of America's space program. How can a society which seems to have difficulty building a reliable washing machine dare to build a spaceship to land on the moon? Part of the answer lies in a technique called QC, or quality control. Our example is the Grumman Aircraft Plant at Bethpage, Long Island, the builder of the lunar module itself. Well, we'll have to stop here now and uh, suit up and get our smocks. Hey, can I have a green smock for Walter, please? A visit to the LEM, or any other spaceship under construction, begins in a chamber with the intriguing name, the Smocking Room. Our guides, Joe Kingfield, LEM quality control manager, and Al Seward, his deputy. Precautions in the final assembly clean room began in spectacular fashion. The shell of LEM, fresh from the factory, is rolled, spun, and rotated to shake loose any stray matter that may have fallen inside during manufacture. Anything from loose screws to forgotten wires. In the clean room, where the lunar modules are made ready for space, we talked about the people who must keep mistakes from happening. Well, now, you do have uh, teams of people who work under you fellows, called quality control people who are sort of the inspectors of this quality control. Mm -hmm. uh, how many people are required to do that job? Well, in this area, to cover a two or three shift operation predicated on the schedule of work in here, we have approximately about 140 quality control people, inspectors and technicians in this area. Now, now, they're not only looking for this extraneous material, but they're actually inspecting the work that is oh, done. Yes. Right. Oh, yes. Every piece of equipment is installed in a spacecraft has inspection operations. Most of the work is controlled through the use of work orders that list all the steps that have to be accomplished by the manufacturing people and the test people. What Vic is doing is assembling a connector, and each wire is stripped and inspected. It looks like a psychedelic superhighway. It's really a bundle of wires, a harness, part of the 40 miles of wires that wind up in every limb. This harness will operate the control panel for a future moon landing. Every wire and every harness must first be stripped of insulation at each end to make room for a connecting pin. There are 12,816 connections in a limb, and every single strip must be checked both by the technician himself and by an inspector to see that there are no nicks or breaks, that the insulation is not cut off too close or too far. What Vic will be doing now, will be entering his identity number next to each wire that he has stripped and each wire that he has crimped. This, with the tool number by serial number of the one that he used, will be able to identify each wire operation that he has performed and quality control will then verify that it was good. A completed control panel, wrong side out. The little bags are fireproof beta cloth, one over every switch in the spacecraft, a precaution growing out of the Apollo 204 fire that killed astronauts Grissom, White, and Chaffee. They were in a command module, not a limb, but the spark that touched off that holocaust may have started in a switch like these. Quality control throughout Apollo got a lot tougher after that. Now a check with a plastic template, shaped exactly like the inside wall of the LEM, to make sure that no wire will touch that surface in flight. Every
every fluid in the lem, as well as the very air in the clean room, must be continuously sampled for purity. Here, a vacuum pump sucks the fluid sample through the finest of filters. Whatever particles were in the liquid are now on the filter. And now the technician must count those particles one by one to see if the fluid is clean enough to fly to the moon. This sample is. This one is not. As Apollo 11 and its LEM counted down toward the moon in Florida, activity at Grumman on Long Island grew frantic on still another LEM, the seventh one, scheduled to land on the moon early next year. For all its life in the clean room, every LEM has its own guardian of the gate, a cabin monitor who must inspect anyone having business inside the LEM, make sure he really does have business, and that he's properly dressed down to booties and gloves. The cabin monitor also checks every tool that goes into the LEM and makes sure it comes out again. Hi. Hi. Would you like to get into the cabin? Please. All right, what's your name? Esposito. Esposito. E-S-P-O-S-I-T-O. Good. And department? 071. 071. It is now 1425. What's the purpose of your visit? I want to check that uh, engine cover. Check the engine cover. Are you taking any tools in no, with no you? No tools. No tools, gloves on, boots on, you're clear. Okay. Free to enter. Thank you. At this stage, LEM is full of things that shouldn't fly with it. Protective covers for its reaction jets, plastic overlays on its windows. Every piece of non-flight hardware must be identified with a numbered red tag. Each tag is entered in a log. On the launch pad, every item in that log must be removed and checked off before LEM is okayed for flight. Pupils have a, a, a major function here to play in quality control, but uh, kind of like the monitor in the the corridors in high school, do, do people take offense sometimes if you're looking over their shoulder? Well, generally they say they give us these black hats to match our black hearts, but uh, I really don't think so. I think everybody recognizes the role we play in the program, and they do their most to, uh, their best to help us. Quality control on these Grumman moon landers is undeniably impressive. Yet even the men in charge here point out that quality control is basically a human technique and therefore only as good as the people carrying it out. Just in our two days of filming this story, we saw several violations. A worker on a scaffold called for a tool. Someone below tossed one up, and it struck the fragile skin of the spaceship. A cabin monitor stopped a worker without gloves from approaching a limb. The worker argued, and the monitor backed down. Nevertheless, as Lem 7, looking like a jolly Japanese Christmas tree ball with all its red tags, rolled out of the clean room for Florida and the moon. There was no question that despite human fallibility, quality control has achieved a phenomenal record of performance in the Apollo flights. Certainly, if Detroit built automobiles this way, the price might be considerably higher, but so would the trade-in value. Walter Cronkite, CBS News, Bethpage, New York.